Hello guys and welcome to another video and welcome to yet another Keystone highlight. This is a video series that aims to cover many of Path of Exile's Keystones, discuss their mechanics and various interactions and talk a bit about potential use cases in different builds and this one is a big one today because we're going to be talking about Divine Flesh, one of the most popular timeless Keystones in the game and with good reason. And this being a timeless Keystone it can be acquired by socketing a timeless jewel into your passive tree which dominates passive skills in its radius, including keystone passives, which will be transformed into a new keystone, the type of which is specific to the type of timeless jewel and the name that's on the jewel. And Divine Flesh can be acquired from the glorious vanity timeless jewel in the name of Zibakwa. And it can also be obtained from the Mahu Zottle's Machination Unique Shield. This one drops from the Trial Master boss, and it grants a whole bunch of other Val related keystones along with Divine Flesh. And we'll talk a bit more about this shield a little bit later on. So Divine Flesh has three modifiers. All damage taken by Pass's energy shield, 50% of elemental damage taken as chaos damage, and plus 5% to maximum chaos resistance. So similar to Tempered by War, this keystone is a damage taken as mechanic, which shifts half of all of the elemental damage that you take into chaos damage. So first, let's take a look at the downside. All damage taken by Pass's Energy Shield. This modifier would essentially remove the use of Energy Shield as a defensive mechanic, so it will no longer be able to absorb damage for you. This is true even if you're using Mind Over Matter with Eldritch Battery, the damage will still bypass the Energy Shield. But unlike the Agnostic, this Keystone doesn't remove your Energy Shield, so you're still able to make use of that resource for other purposes. Eldritch Battery is a Keystone located at the top of the passive tree, and it can also be acquired from the Devouring Diadem Unique Helmet and the Replica Sorrow of the Divine Flask. Eldritch Battery causes your energy shield to protect your mana instead of life, and makes it so your energy shield will be used as a resource for skill costs before mana if the skill would usually cost mana. Because your energy shield is not taking any damage, you'll have energy shield's recharge mechanic active all the time, so you can keep using your abilities. Energy Shield recharges at a base rate of 33.3% per second, which is halved by Eldritch Battery's 50% less recharge modifier. With enough Energy Shield, you'll also be able to make use of a Divine Blessing Aura. This support adds a large chunk of mana to the cost of an aura to enable it to be cast as a temporary aura. Many builds will reserve most or all of their mana pool, preventing them from being able to use a Divine Blessing, but with Eldritch Battery, you can reserve all of your mana and the cost of a Divine Blessing Aura will be paid in Energy Shield instead, allowing you to gain full benefit from the extra aura all of the time. If you can't fit Eldritch Battery into your build, you may be able to make use of a Battery Staff. This is a heist exclusive base which drops from the Replicas or Experimented Base Types Grand Heist. The implicit on this staff base grants a large amount of flat energy shield and causes the socketed gems to spend energy shield instead of mana. This can be useful if you've solved the mana cost of your main ability that's in your body armor 6 link, but want to access a divine blessing aura setup which you can socket into this staff. Whilst the downside of divine flesh prohibits the use of energy shield's traditional defensive property, you can still make use of it as a resource, or you can choose to ignore it, especially if you have a considerably low amount of energy shield and you can't afford to invest further into it. Alright, let's look at the upside of Divine Flesh. 50% of elemental damage taken as chaos damage and plus 5% to maximum chaos resistance. This modifier will make it so that half of all of the elemental damage that you take will be shifted and taken as chaos damage instead. And since this modifier doesn't specify being limited to hits, it also applies to damage over time. With the addition of the 5% maximum chaos resistance, this means that at a baseline, as long as you have your resistances capped, your effective resistance against elemental damage will be improved. This is because half of the elemental damage will be resisted by your normal elemental resistance, and the other half will be resisted by your chaos resistance, so your effective resistance for elemental damage will be the mean value between the specific elemental resistance and your chaos resistance. For example, let's say a character is using Divine Flesh and has 75% lightning resistance and 80% chaos resistance, and they take a hit of 2000 lightning damage. 1000 damage is taken as lightning damage and is mitigated by the 75% lightning resistance, so 250 lightning damage is taken, and the other half is taken as chaos damage and is mitigated by the 80% chaos resistance, so 200 chaos damage is taken, for a total of 450 damage taken. 
In this example, 77.5% of damage is mitigated, and therefore the effective resistance for lightning damage is 77.5%, which is the mean value between lightning and chaos resistance. With Divine Flesh, you'll be able to continue scaling your effective resistance against elemental damage by scaling your maximum chaos resistance, whilst also becoming very strong against the raw chaos damage. Maximum Chaos Resistance modifiers aren't as common as Maximum Elemental Resistances, but you can still get a considerable amount from a few resources. You can gain additional Maximum Chaos Resistance as a Searing Exarch Body Armor Implicit from Eldritch Embers. This modifier has 1% Maximum Chaos Resistance at Tier 5 and 6, 2% at Tier 3 and 4, and 3% at Tier 1 and 2. The Searing Exarch Body Armor Implicit can also roll all Maximum Resistances, which includes Chaos Resistance, and this provides 1% at Tiers 3 to 6, and 2% at Tier 1 and 2. For modifiers of Tier 1 and 2, you'll need to use Orbs of Conflict to raise the modifier level above Tier 3. You can get up to 5% Maximum Chaos Resistance on a shield by combining the Maximum Chaos Resistance modifier which rolls up to 3% with the All Maximum Resistances modifier which rolls up to 2%. These have a very low weighting, so it may be useful to craft on a shield that has a fractured modifier first. You can gain 1% maximum chaos resistance from the Chaos Mastery wheels on the passive tree, and there's also some cluster jewel notables that can be found on small chaos resistance cluster jewels. Anti Venom provides 1% to maximum chaos resistance and some other good modifiers, and Born of Chaos provides 3% making it a great option to gain substantial amounts of maximum chaos resistance from a single stat. You can also gain maximum chaos resistance modifiers as a synthesized implicit on helmets, body armors, quivers, boots and gloves. And there's some unique items that you can make use of too. The unique shield Saffles frame will provide 4% to all maximum resistances, and the grey spire staff will provide up to 4% as well, but be aware that this item has no sockets. Anne's Heritage grants 2% to all Maximum Resistances while you have no Endurance Charges. And you can get 1% to all Maximum Resistances as a Corrupted Implicit on Body Armors and Amulets. There's also the Apep Supremacy Shield, which will grant 3% to all Maximum Resistances while Poisoned, but it also makes Bleeding on you deal Chaos Damage instead of Physical Damage, which will mean you'll barely feel those super dangerous bleeds anymore once you have high Chaos Resistance. But Divine Flesh doesn't only help you improve your effective resistance against elemental damage, because shifting damage into another type changes the inherent properties of the damage. Let's talk about non-damaging ailments. These ailments such as Shock, Chill or Scorch are based on damage taken. So for example when you take a hit of cold damage, the cold damage taken has the inherent property of being able to chill you, and the amount of cold damage that you take from that hit will determine the magnitude of the chill that's inflicted on you. Because Divine Flesh allows you to shift elemental damage you take into Chaos Damage, part of the damage that is shifted into Chaos Damage can no longer apply non-damaging ailments by default. For example, if you take a hit of Lightning Damage that has a chance to shock, and you're using Divine Flesh, half of the damage that you take will be taken as Chaos Damage, and can no longer inflict shock by default, and therefore the resulting shock from the remaining damage that was taken as Lightning Damage may be lower. There are currently no non-damaging ailments that are tied to Chaos Damage, and therefore the shifted Chaos Damage that you take cannot inflict any non-damaging ailments on you. Importantly, the half of the elemental damage that you take as Chaos Damage also cannot inflict poison on you by default. This is because damaging ailments are based on the damage of a hit, not the damage taken. This also means that a hit of fire damage can still ignite you with the full force of the hit, even if half of the damage is being taken as Chaos Damage, so be aware of that but ailments aren't the only property that a damage type can have, because the damage can also have type-specific penetration. Shifting damage to be taken as another type will allow you to avoid damage type-specific penetration on that part of the damage. For example, if you were using Divine Flesh and you were hit by a Shaper Ball, which deals about 13,000 damage with 25% cold penetration, 6,500 damage would be resisted by your cold resistance, and the cold penetration would apply but the other 6,500 damage will be resisted by your Chaos Resistance, and therefore the Cold Penetration cannot apply. So this modifier is very strong at dealing with penetration. However, do be aware of situations where monsters can have global penetration. For example, in Expedition, you can explode a remnant which will allow all of the monsters to penetrate 15% of your Chaos Resistance. You probably don't want to do that, 
because this will allow all of these monsters to penetrate your resistance on half of the elemental damage they deal to you, so be careful with that. So apart from increasing your maximum chaos resistance, how else can you capitalise on shifting damage taken into chaos damage? Well, there are some very strong mechanics that you can combine with this keystone. The fourth vow is a unique body armour that was added in patch 3.21. This armour has an important modifier. Armour also applies to chaos damage taken from hits. Unlike Transcendence, this modifier won't prevent your armour from applying to physical damage, but instead it will apply the full armour value to chaos damage taken from hits. This is a very powerful modifier, let's take a look at an example. Let's say a character is using Divine Flesh with the 4th Vow, and has 75% lightning resistance and 80% chaos resistance, with 30,000 armour. The character is hit by the Eater of Worlds Beam ability, which deals about 24,000 lightning damage. 12,000 damage is taken as lightning damage, which is resisted by the 75% lightning resistance, so the character takes 3,000 lightning damage. The other 12,000 damage is taken as chaos damage, and is first resisted by the 80% chaos resistance, bringing it down to 2,400 chaos damage. Then armour is applied, providing 71% chaos damage reduction, so the character takes 696 chaos damage, for a total of 3,696 damage taken. You can see how powerful this modifier is at mitigating elemental damage in combination with Divine Flesh, even with a moderate amount of armour. Scaling maximum chaos resistance is also a great way to improve the efficiency of the armour application, because armour is more effective against smaller hits. There's also the Doppelganger Guys, a Maven exclusive unique body armour. This body armour has a modifier that can roll up to 40% less physical and chaos damage taken, and unlike the 4th Vow, this modifier also affects damage over time. So things like the Shaper or Maven ground damage over time effects, or burning ground and ignites, will deal half of their damage to you as chaos damage if you're using Divine Flesh, so that portion of the damage will be mitigated by this modifier. The Doppelganger's Guise is a great lower investment option when compared to the 4th Vow, especially on a build that's not scaling armour since it also provides a decent mitigation against physical damage. Both of these armours have great synergy with Forbidden Rite as well, as you'll benefit from the maximum chaos resistance from Divine Flesh, and the chaos damage mitigation on the self chaos damage dealt to you every time you use the skill. There's also the Tainted Pact, a new unique amulet added in 3.21. This amulet has a modifier which makes chaos damage over time taken while leeching heal you instead. This one has a high opportunity cost, especially considering the amulet slot is a huge source of damage for many builds. But for builds that can have high uptime on leeching, for example a Slayer's Overleech, you can effectively ignore elemental damage over time if you're using Divine Flesh, since half of that elemental damage over time that you take will be taken as chaos damage instead, and will be healing you instead of dealing damage as long as you're leeching life, which counters the other half that's dealing damage to you. Be aware that the heal from this item is based on post mitigation damage, so things like resistance will apply to it first. There's also the new armour and energy shield mastery which applies 10% of your armour to chaos damage taken from hits. This is a great defensive modifier to have if you're scaling armour and using Divine Flesh. You can use this mastery or the 4th Vow on a Juggernaut that uses Divine Flesh in combination with Unbreakable. This is an incredibly strong combination of mechanics because armour is applied separately to each damage type, so you'll be able to gain much more mitigation by splitting the damage, making your armour more efficient against the smaller portions of damage that it's being applied to. And once you have great ways to mitigate the chaos damage that you're taking, you can consider shifting more of the damage that you take into chaos damage. The Incandescent Heart is another unique body armour which has the modifier 25% of elemental damage from hits is taken as chaos damage. This can be used with Divine Flesh so that 75% of the elemental damage from hits is taken as chaos damage, which further improves your effective elemental resistances when scaling your maximum chaos resistance. With this combination you'll be incredibly strong against elemental damage penetration, as you'll be able to avoid penetration on 75% of that damage. You can also obtain modifiers that will shift a considerable amount of physical damage you take from hits to be taken as chaos damage instead. There's a helmet modifier which drops in Dell from those that drop chaos type items. This modifier grants 10% of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage. You can then use an Eater of Worlds Eldritch Implicit on the helmet to gain up to 8% of the same stat, so you can get up to 18% of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage from the helmet slot alone. There's also another armour and energy shield mastery which makes you take 10% of physical damage from hits as chaos damage. 
and Hunter-influenced body armors can roll the same modifier, which rolls up to 15% on a tier 1 mod, or 18% on an elevated mod which also grants 1% maximum chaos resistance. The unique weapons Replica Innsbury Edge and the Dark Scorn also provide a percentage of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage, and you can get up to 8% on a Corrupted Shield Implicit modifier. So you can get quite a large amount of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage, but due to the competition for item slots, most builds will likely only use the helmet slot for this type of modifier, whilst using the armor and energy shield mastery if they can reach it. Now, I mentioned Mahu Zottle's machination earlier. This shield grants a bunch of keystones, and one of them is Divine Flesh. This is very important because it means that your timeless jewel slot is freed up, and you can now use a lethal pride jewel in the name of Rakiata to gain Tempered by War. I've already done a keystone highlight on Tempered by War in this series, so you can check that out if you wish to learn more about this keystone in detail. But essentially, this is a very similar keystone to Divine Flesh, but instead of shifting half of all of the elemental damage you take into chaos damage, it instead shifts half of all of the cold and lightning damage that you take into fire damage. By using Divine Flesh with Tempered by War, you can no longer take any cold or lightning damage so you no longer need to gear for those resistances, and you only need fire and chaos resistance. This setup is absolutely crazy at dealing with elemental penetration. Cold and lightning penetration will no longer affect you at all, and fire penetration will only affect half of the damage, as the other half will be taken as chaos damage. You can fully focus on your maximum fire and chaos resistance. And speaking of maximum resistance, the shield grants a keystone that's unique to this item, Everlasting Sacrifice. This keystone sacrifices all of your energy shield to grant 5% to all maximum resistances for 4 seconds whenever you reach full energy shield. You'll need to find a way to actually gain the energy shield though, as the shield's other keystones disable energy shield regeneration and recharge. Some of the best options for this are the Demon Stitcher Unique Gloves which sacrifice a percentage of your life to grant that much energy shield every time you use a spell or the Sorrow of the Divine and Replica Sorrow of the Divine unique flasks, which cause life recovery from flasks to also recover energy shield. The Zealous Oath Keystone on the Sorrow of the Divine flask no longer has any effect, since Mahu Zottle's Machination grants Vow Pact, which disables life regeneration. However, the Replica version of this flask grants Eldritch Battery, which can be very useful as we discussed earlier in this video. These flasks can be combined with flask generation from the Pathfinder or the Ascendant Pathfinder Ascendancies, so you can maintain them even in boss fights. And they also pair very well with the Pathfinder's Master Surgeon, so you can have constant life and energy shield recovery from your life flask. You can even consider using the Burden of Truth Unique Belt. This one drops from Cirrus. It grants the Supreme Decadence Keystone, which is otherwise only obtainable from a Timeless Jewel. This keystone applies life recovery from flasks to your energy shield as well, but it does have a sizable less life recovery from flasks modifier on it too, so it's not as good of an option. And once you have a setup that can maintain everlasting sacrifice, you'll already have 85% maximum chaos resistance and 80% fire resistance, so you won't need to invest too much to get up to 90% or close to 90% on both resistances, and you'll have the base for an extremely tanky build. Overall, Divine Flesh is an extremely powerful keystone that has inherent properties to allow you to deal with elemental penetration and non-damaging ailments, whilst immediately improving your effective elemental resistances. It can also be combined with other mechanics to create incredibly durable builds that can tank some of the scariest boss abilities in the game. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. And I need you, yes you, to join me on this journey. I'm trying to grow this channel into something big and I need your support. Consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below the video. Huge shout out to new channel members Frank Blanco and Kevin M. Your support is truly appreciated. Thank you for watching and as always, stay tuned and stay safe.